Hey guys, still here and welcome to this quick start guide to ICBM. ICBM is a game that is all about nuclear war. Your objective is straightforward. Kill off as much population of the other faction as possible. Um, it really is as grim as that. Now what you can expect in this video is a bit of information about the game. Uh, what are you looking at? What screen elements do what? And what are some of the strategies that you can use? I intend to make these videos relatively short, so you can have a quick start guide and you can play it for yourself during the October Steam Festival. Um, this is the Autumn Edition, and this means that the game will be free from October 7th through October 13th. It is going to come out later this year, and I do not yet know what the final price is going to be. Now, this is a preview version. This means that this is not a review, just more of an overview uh, to see what you can expect. Let's start a new game, which, as I can tell, is functionally restricted. <laughs> so, yeah, um, that doesn't quite work. It is a preview of a build. So we're going to go with multiplayer, create a game. And I'm just going to fill up every slot with the AI. Now, this is the one, or this is the, may, the way that you set up your multiplayer game. You start with any kind of, well, I'm a bit reluctant to call it a continent, but let's say your faction. North America, South America, Europe, Russia, East Asia, Pacific, which, uh, for those of you wondering, is Australia and surrounding islands, if you will, Africa, and West Asia, slash the Middle East. Then what you can see over here is the units slash vehicle slash items that you're starting with. I'm starting with an airbase, a carrier, three destroyers, a submarine, three radar sites, and ten nuclear bombs. But I might not like that. So I can click Distribute, and I can remove all the units that I have selected here. It gives me a total of 860 points to spend. And depending on the, the let's say, the continent, the nation that you want to play, you can go for a different setup. For example, if you're going Russia, you might not have too much use for an aircraft carrier, because you got a lot of landmass, and an aircraft carrier just doesn't reach that far. What might be more helpful for you is, for example, starting with 10 megaton bombs. So you can very quickly decimate larger cities. This is um, not a video where I go in depth on all of these, but it's just an overview of how you can set up your initial starting units. And this is something that I really quite like about the game because you can customize your own play style and your own starting position. And I believe that that will have dramatic effects on how the game is further played. Now I'm going to go with the standard setup and I'm going to play as Europe. Um, if you are happy with the, situa the, the situation, the, the systems as is, hit publish and I can say the game is online. So it's now available for other players, but I just want to play against AI. So I'm going to hit start, disable, uh, sorry, uh, assign AI players to all the factions and let's go. After a bit of brief loading, this is what you come up to, the world map. The world map consists of not just the continents, which you can select through the overview that says uh, territory overlay, but it also shows you what the major cities are on those various continents. My continent, Europe, is um, limited to Minsk, Kiev and Odessa, and that's where Russia starts. Now. What you have over on the left is the units that you have available for deployment. I have an airbase, I have a carrier, my three destroyers, a submarine, and a couple of radar sites. I'm going to start with the radar sites because I want to know what the other factions are up to. Now, if I click a radar site, you're going to see that this blue circle comes up, which is the detection range for that particular radar site. I'm going to put it over here because I expect that I'll not just get attacked by Africa, but also South America. And I really want to know when those bombers are going to come in so that I can intercept them. So I'm going to put a radar site to the west of Sevilla. I also want to have one over on the east. As you can see, this sort of seems to cover a larger area. And that has to do with the curvature of the Earth. Because if I click globe view, you can see that it is actually a circle. 
but because they sort of flattened the map, it looks a little different. It's not that you have a, a larger radar range, it just looks a little different. I'm gonna set this one up at the eastern border with St. Petersburg and Moscow, and the last one next to Athens, making sure that I have that area covered as well. If you wanna know what your actual radar range is, you can hit this one, radar coverage, and you can see what the other units are either sending your way or what they have parked just across the border. I'm also gonna deploy my airbase. If I deploy this, you can see that there's a large circle that is the range of the aircraft. So if I put it, let's say, over here in Ireland, I'm going to be covering uh, quite a bit of Russia. But if I co if I put it uh, north of or northwest of Kiev, I'm going to cover a hell of a lot more. I'm going to put it pretty much in the middle to make sure that I have my fighters covering every every possible angle from bombers. I'm also going to deploy my carrier. Uh, set up a few destroyers as escorts. And I also want to attach a submarine to that group. Right, what else can you see? Well, I happen to have my submarine selected. The current orders are to follow the aircraft carrier, as I just directed. And this one is a standard attack submarine, and it only comes with torpedoes. These things have a range of 400 and a speed of 200, and these things can be upgraded. In order to do that, you go to research. Currently, there's no research going on and the game hasn't started yet. If it would have, you could see over here on the bottom right-hand side two bars from the pause button. If I want to upgrade my torpedoes, I'm gonna have to look for better submarine warfare. Now, these are all the various upgrades or research projects that you can undertake. And as you can see, they are bound to each other. You can only have a mobile SAM once you have researched a SAM in the first place. So. Let's say that we're starting out 1950-something-ish, I guess. Because SAM sites just haven't been invented yet. And the same can be said for quite a lot of things. Uh, I don't have a space radar yet, so I cannot enemy or cannot spot enemy radar systems. Uh, sorry, satellites. Now, for now, I want to improve my torpedoes, which um, I believe falls under... Let's see... Uh, better missiles... Uh, ASM, as you can see, I'm still finicking around with the game, trying to figure out where to improve it. I do know that submarines can get an upgrade from silent... Oh, there we go, silent engines. Decreases the effectiveness of enemy sonar equipment, increases the range of torpedoes. So, yes, I want to research that, and this is a really short research project. It's only going to last five minutes. Now, once I'm in this overview, this is what I'm researching, this is what I'm constructing. This is the construction queue on the right-hand side. And I'm actually not constructing anything. If you want to start construction, you're going to have to click on any of these things in four different categories. And it's currently four categories, but this can be more, because I believe satellites have their own category. Under the, let's say, land vehicles tab, I have an airbase and a radar site. And would I research a SAM site, I could also start building those. Ships. We have the four ships that we have available, except for the cruiser, which I haven't actually built yet. Airplanes, you got fighters, bombers, and attack bombers. And you can park the bomber and the fighter at the airfield, or rather replace them if they've been destroyed. And the attack bomber goes on the aircraft carrier. And finally, we have the nuclear bombs and the megaton bombs. Intercontinental ballistic missiles, or ICBMs, have not yet been invented. But again, would I go for a research project that would allow me to get those things? Um, let's see here. Um, I could actually start building a missile silo and a megaton ICBM. Those things do immense amounts of damage to enemy towns. Speaking of the enemy, you are immediately at war with absolutely everybody. You can immediately engage every different faction. And unless you're in a faction or unless you're in a, uh, an alliance, you will be attacked from every which way. I currently don't really want that. I'm going to try and get Russia as my ally. Because it is a very large landmass. And actually, no, I want to have Africa as my ally. Because I already have my radar site set up on the eastern border. So I want to see if Africa is willing to join me. And for that, I'm going to go to the diplomacy screen. Right now, I'm going to ask uh, the CPU of Africa to join me. And this means that I have requested to join the Brown Alliance. Alliance formed. There we go. 
They have accepted, and now I'm in a faction. I am in the Green Alliance. This means that Africa will mm, more or less not attack me. Why more or less? Well, the AI and most definitely other players can be treacherous. They can have you as an ally up to the point where it serves them. When you have outlived your usefulness, they can still attack you. So don't go and focus all of your defenses on a border where you might think that the enemy is going to come from. Try to spread them out. Because maybe that ally on your west side, east side, south side, or north side might not be your ally for that much longer. What you can also do with the alliances is share your radar information. So I'll be sharing my information with Africa and vice versa. And we can share our research. This one is particularly potent because you all have a different research uh, project that you can run. And you just share the results of that research. So if Africa would start researching SAM sites, I would get those. Vice versa, I research the silent engines and Africa would get those. This makes alliances very, very powerful. The last button over here is show nuclear assets. This is one that I usually don't click because I don't want my allies to know how many nuclear assets I have. Whether they're ICBMs, bombs, um, thermonuclear bombs, I don't want to give that information away. Now, one thing that I forgot to mention over here at the production tab is that currently, let's say all the, the points or all the, the resources that I have are going to go 50% into science, 50% into construction. You can use this slider to get more science done or more construction done. The question can be asked, well, would you want to slide it one way entirely or the other way entirely? Um, that's entirely up to you. I personally keep it around at 50-50 to make sure that I don't fall behind on the science too much. And I'm still producing stuff, um, that is, if I actually have anything queued up. If I slide this all the way over to the right, this is going to go to 7 minutes 52. But Silent Engines is going to go into three question marks because I'm not spending anything on research. If I were to spend, let's say, 1%, this doesn't take 5 minutes, but 5 hours. There is something to be said for either uh, distribution. You can go full construction and just overwhelm the enemy with a lot of units. Or you can go full science and maybe quickly rack up your technological advantage and then start producing stuff. This is one of the strategy elements and it is entirely up to you. All right, what else do we have? Well, we have the diplomacy menu. Um, we have the units over here. And let's have a look at some of the units that I actually have on the airfield. This is an airbase. It is a very expensive asset. Because if I wanted to build another airbase, that's 11 minutes and 48 seconds. That's quite a lot of time. Any airbase that you build comes with 15 fighters and 5 bombers. Now the fighters can only be armed with air-to-air -air missiles. This means that they'll automatically engage enemy airplanes as they get detected. So if, let's say, this radar site would detect enemy bombers, this airbase would scramble the fighters and they immediately attack enemy bombers. The bomber can attack anything that you click on. It says hold X to launch, but easier is to just click it and then tell it to go, well, anywhere. Currently, however, it is equipped with standard bombs. These are somewhat effective against most units, except cities. I also have nuclear bombs. Now a nuclear bomb is effective against hardened positions and will immediately wipe out any tactical slash strategical assets that the enemy might have. If somebody dropped a nuclear bomb on top of this airfield or airbase, it would be gone. It'd be utterly destroyed. Then you have a third option, or at least for me it's currently grayed out because I don't have any warheads in stock, and that's the Megaton bomb. If I wanted to nuke a city from Russia, for example, I would click this one and the bomber could then nuke Moscow. The moment that you click on a nuclear device, the game is going to tell you how many points a city is worth. And this is how you score points in this game. The points is, um, well, the points are listed over on the right hand side. You got North America, South America, well, we're all at zero because the game hasn't started yet. But what I'm going to do now is quickly build a nuke. I'm going to build a Megaton Bomb. And I'm going to speed that up immensely. 
So it's only going to take me 33 seconds. By doing that, I make sure that I can quickly nuke the enemy position. I want to just nuke Moscow to show you how that works with the points. What you have over here, by the way, at the play button is the speed of the game. Slow, or let's say normal, two times speed, three times, four times. So I'm gonna, Alliance oh, formed. Go. South America has joined the Magenta Alliance, so the AI is also joining up. We've got the, uh, the Yellow Alliance, and the other four seemingly are not in an alliance yet. I already lost a radar site, the one next to Athens. And that's courtesy of the carrier and their destroyer escorts. So at this point, I'm pretty blind as to what is happening around Athens. And whether you're playing against the AI or you're playing against players, they will do this. They will try to destroy your assets. Uh, it looks like we have... Oh, Africa is requesting to share alliance assets. Alliance formed. Uh, no. Pacific wants to join the alliance. Yes. Alliance formed. I do like having another party in here. Uh, oh, they automatically accepted because both Pacific and Africa voted for sharing nuclear assets. I'm going to suggest we share research, which gets accepted. I can now also see what these guys are researching if I go back to the Construction Science Espionage tab. Both Africa and the Pacific are researching thermonuclear bombs. So I'll automatically get those by the time that they're done. Speaking of done, I have a couple of nuclear warheads ready. When you have one or more, they automatically get stocked to the aircraft or asset where you most need them. I want to use this bomber to attack Moscow. So I'm going to click it once, click Moscow, and the bomber is on its way. Uh, yeah, sure. They wanted to share radar info. I'm fine with that. Now, this has the look of a B-52. Um, if you upgrade to better aircraft through research, you can find these as a B-1B Lancer icon. Now, I don't know if there's any airfield nearby. Alliance formed. I believe that there is not, so I can just fly in here. And here comes the first blow onto Moscow. Moscow currently has a population of 10.4 million, and it provides 30% of the GDP of the entire continent. So here comes the bomber. It drops the nuke, turns around. And yes, that was intentionally loud. You can see there is a mushroom cloud above Moscow. And over here on the top left side, it says Moscow hit 1.326 million dead. That immediately gives me 77 points. Because I slowly whittled away at Russia's population. I reduced that by 4% of the total population of the Russia continent. This gave me points, and it cost them points. This is the only way to get points, as far as I have figured. I can, for example, sink the enemy aircraft carrier from West Asia, but that doesn't actually get me any points. It just means that they have fewer assets to attack me with. So, this is where the strategic element also comes in. You might have an entire barrier of, uh, let's say, Russia has it, a couple of SAM sites, maybe a radar site or two. You can potentially safely ignore that with an ICBM and just fly over everything, unless Russia has researched anti-ballistic missile defenses. Don't get too stuck up with this game on just focusing on destroying the tactical assets, because that's not going to give you any points. For me, however, the aircraft carrier here is a threat. Because the aircraft carrier potentially, as well as can be mine by the way, I can arm this one with nuclear bombs. You cannot, as far as I figured, arm the attack bombers with thermonuclear weapons. So sure enough, these will be somewhat effective against a town, but they are nowhere near as effective as one of those megaton bombs. Because they are far less deadly. This one is a nuclear bomb with a thousand, sorry, 100 kiloton bomb. This one is a one megaton bomb. So by my math, it's 10 times the force of this guy. This means that a megaton bomb is far more destructive, but would be utterly overkill if I wanted to sink that carrier. Now what I can do is arm this thing, the bomber, or well rather my bombers, with the bomb uh, that I still have available, which is the standard 100 kiloton 
uh, or what was it, 100 ton nuclear bomb. Uh, 100 kiloton. So I can now tell these guys to attack this aircraft carrier. The problem is, this carrier won't go quietly. Because, well, two factors. I won't know where it is, exactly, because my radar site got destroyed. And two, both the aircraft carrier can defend itself with airplanes, but also these destroyers can fight back with missile defenses. So it remains to be seen whether this bomber is actually going to make it all the way to the carrier and back. And it doesn't. I have a couple of aircraft from West Asia, probably from the aircraft carrier, and they just shot down my unit. So this is a potential uh, severe problem, because I cannot do anything against the fighters. However, the fighters can't currently hurt my cities. The aircraft carrier can do some damage, but it doesn't have any nuclear weapons. So for now, I can more or less safely ignore it. The carrier, however, can strike my airbase, if it knows where it is. And currently, I don't believe that it does. What I will do is click on the airbase and allow an air patrol. And this way, I at least have a couple of fighters overhead at all times, making sure that whatever aircraft gets spotted in range immediately gets attacked. Now, by attacking my bomber, these fighters gave away their position. So immediately, my airbase has scrambled two of my own fighters to start and engage the aircraft over here. What else do you need to know about the game? Um, it has a fantastic strike plan option. Strike plan is impressively scary. And I'm going to show you that through one of the tutorials. It is the big red button one. Let's play Armageddon. I've loaded up this scenario because it is both a terrifying and exceptionally impressive feature of the game. We're currently playing as North America. So all of the assets over here are mine, as well as the carriers, these, uh, this one here on the west, this one on the northeast, and the southeast. So I have quite a few assets already surrounding South America. What I can do is have my aircraft carriers attack the tactical assets, the SAM sites, the airfields, and then have my ICBM silos, which are here, here, and here. These guys can go, oh sorry, and two more. These guys can go after all the cities at the same time. This is a feature that I have not quite seen in other games, uh, potentially with the exception of Hearts of Iron. I think maybe that game has something that resembles this. Now, click on the new strike plan button. Here we go. I'm going to select what asset I want to attack with. I'm going to select what asset to attack from the enemy and who I'm going to be attacking, which is currently South America. You can see this says exclude allies. This means that automatically the allies that you have won't be a possible target. If I tick that off and I have allies, then I can actually strike my allies. So you can very sneakily be preparing an attack on your allies by using one of those strike plans. And the moment that either you decide that their life has come to an end, or that they decide to attack you, you can immediately launch a strike plan against them. When you have a strike plan, however, you need to make sure you have enough bombs. Whether they are nuclear bombs, megaton ICBMs, megaton bombs, whichever you need, make sure you have enough. Otherwise, your attack plan might not work well enough. Now, I'm going to click the, area, the carrier icon, and I want to attack the airbase missile silo and over the horizon radar. So this is mostly their defensive assets. That's the airbase, that's the over the horizon radar, and this is the SAM site. Oh, sorry, the missile silo. Click on the SAM site and click on it again. This will make it a secondary target. The faction column allows you to limit your attack to a specific regional target only. So I could, if the tutorial would allow it, not only attack South America, but also Asia at the same time and just deliver a hammer blow to two different opponents. Important over here as well is auto continue. This means that it's going to continue attacking as long as they have ammunition. Synchronize attack is fantastic, and I cannot recommend this enough. Make sure you have this on. All units involved in this plan are going to coordinate their attacks and make sure that they happen at the same time. 
And time to destruction means that all your ordnance will arrive at the same time. So, for example, my missile silo over here in the north would need to fire just a bit earlier than the one slightly more to the middle. Because this one has a longer travel time. Now, let's create another strike plan. It's time for the nuclear, sorry, strategic nuclear forces. I'm going to select the SSBN, Submarine Ballistic Nuclear, and the Missile Silo as the attackers. I'm going to set my cities, or their cities, as a target. Uh, sorry, also the airbase. The airbase also needs to join in. Assign a new icon, which you can do here at the top. I'm going to set this as the nuclear plan. Now, there are two icons representing your strike plans. That's the one for the carriers, and this is the one for the actual nuclear option. If you hover over it, you can see what these things do. And lethal they will be. The carriers have all selected their own targets. They have selected SAM sites, mostly, and the one over here. This aircraft carrier group is also going to try and attack these uh, missile silos over more towards the middle of South America. And as you can see, um, hover over the plan icon to read it. With these buttons, I can emergency execute the plan, so go right now, or execute plan alpha, let's say, in a more quiet fashion. Now that Armageddon is longer... Um, Note that Armageddon plan is longer sets to execute. This one takes 22 seconds to execute. This one takes a minute 45. Because it takes more time before all the units are airborne, for example the bombers, and for all the missiles to reach their targets. Execute plan Armageddon option. This will trigger the attack. Executing strike plan. What you can see happening is what these bases and what these weapons are going to go after. You can see your missile silos and SSBNs went into wait mode. That's these guys. They have the small snoozing icon over them, the small Zeds. They don't need to fire just yet. Same goes for the SSBNs, the boomers, the nuclear subs. Unpause the game to continue. What we're first going to have happen is that the air bases are going to start. And this one first, because this one has the longest way to travel. So we're going to see aircraft launch. There's one of the B-1B Lancers. This one is armed with a 50 megaton bomb. Uh, this is going to be a very, very potent attack. I'm going to speed it up a little. You can also start to see other aircraft launch. The boomers are not yet going airborne. Your bombers are now close enough to the enemy territory. It's time to disable their defenses. So the bombers are in the air. And before they hit, I want to make sure that the air defenses are down. So I'm immediately going to execute Plan Alpha. And by doing... Oh. Uh, by doing that, I'll make sure that the air defenses are either down or mostly down by the time that the bombers get there. Executing execute Plan Alpha. Strike plan. The carriers are going to be launching their attack bombers. You can see them here. These are Hornets by the icon look of it. And they're going to be trying to attack the AA posts. Unfortunately, some of the aircraft that I've sent out are already getting attacked. This will happen. You will lose units during attacks. And that's alright, because they're pretty easy to replace. A lot of different events will be happening almost simultaneously. And the game is going to try and tell you about all of them over here on the top left side, which is the journal mode. Switch it to nuclear war, and you won't always get the pause when something new has happened. Now, we have destroyed some of these uh, more tactical assets. Some of the SAM sites are getting hit. Uh, we can see that the fighters are already attacking the bombers that are getting launched from the air bases. And the air bases are slowly losing health. That's the bar underneath the air base icon. What we're also going to see happen is that these fight, uh, sorry, these bombers are getting very, very close to their targets. And because they're getting close, this is when the nuclear silos are joining in. We got 3 times 1M, which I think is either a megaton or something. Uh, MIRV, multiple independent re-entry vehicle ICBMs moving towards their targets. These things can be intercepted. However, it's going to take a while. And you can see that they're getting already split up. They're attacking various different targets. That is the independent re-entry vehicle. Current attack position. They're trying to hit different strategic or uh, tactical assets. At the same time, the boomers joined into the fight as well. And they too have sent out. 
And that is the effect of a strike plan. We just hit Salvador, Recife, Saera, Lima, um, Guayaquil, Bogota, Maracaibo, Santo Domingo, Kingston, Havana, Merida, and Managua at the same time, causing immense amount of casualties. L this is what we did. Just the hit on Santo Domingo took out 2 million people. This puts you on the map, points-wise, and this puts the enemy player off the map. Now, as far as I know, it doesn't really impact their ability to do damage. They can still produce stuff, they can still research stuff, but in the end, they will not have as many points. And you can see that we're still not quite done, because there were still cities that were not hit. Mostly the cities that were a bit further to the south. Santiago, Cordoba, Buenos Aires. All of these guys are getting hit time and time again. And the score is just going up and up and up. This is where I'm going to leave you guys with this video. I really like the look of ICBM because it has a lot of different ways that you can play it. I still haven't played enough of it to really give you any sort of real strategic advice. But I definitely will be doing a lot more of it. And you can too. Because as I mentioned, the game will be free during the Steam Autumn Festival, which starts on October 7th. So have a look at the link down below in the description. That's where you can find the game. Add it to your Steam wishlist, and I think you'll automatically get a notification by the time that the Steam uh, Autumn Festival comes up. If you have any questions about the game, let me know down below in the comment section, and I'll try to answer any that you might have. Uh, again, I don't know everything about the game, but I do have contact with the devs slash publishers, so I might be able to get some answers for you. I hope you enjoy what you're seeing. Um, I really, really like it, and I'll be streaming it uh, well, probably quite a few times for the next couple of days slash weeks. Join me during the streams, and you can see the gameplay live, uh, ask your questions, and who knows, maybe even join in come October 7th. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you guys soon for another video.